Davy Hamilton is, as far as I'm concerned, an underappreciated figure in IndyCar. As a driver, he finished runner-up in the championship standings twice in the early days of the Indy Racing League, and as a broadcaster, he's dedicated decades to the sport on IndyCar radio. However, despite the immense amount of respect I have for the man, I can't just blow smoke at people's rear ends. Y2K changed a lot of things, and in the world of IndyCar, no change was steeper and more apparent than the change in results and fortune for Davy Hamilton. After finishing second, second, and fourth in the previous three seasons, Davy Hamilton went out in 2000 and laid an egg. Today, I tell the story of Davy Hamilton's disastrous 2000 season. Heading into 2000, Davey had to face some changes. In 1999, Davey Hamilton was racing for Gallus Racing, where he finished fourth in the championship standings, getting three podiums in the process. Davey had a good year in 1999, but thanks to factors entirely out of his control, he was booted out. Now this story is a tad long-winded, so stay with me here. On the other side of the IndyCar split, in the world of kart, Al Unser Jr. and Team Penske were in a downward spiral. Penske were using their own chassis at this time, and they sucked. Paul Tracy had scored Team Penske's last win in the 90s back in 1997. Seven, a year which ended in Tracy Gang fired for criticizing the car. I've covered that season already, because it was a whirlwind. Ever since the Tracy firing, Penske pumped out their worst results in the team's history. Unser himself had won since 1995, so it seemed pretty inevitable what was going to come next. By the end of the 1999 kart season, it was all but assured that Al Unser Jr. was leaving both Team Penske and kart. The question of where Unser would go seemed like a dead giveaway. Unser had driven for Gallus Racing on two separate occasions, firstly from the team's opening in 1983 through to the next next year, then again from 1988 to 1993. Unser returning to the team that he had won countless races and a championship with was always going to happen, and it is what happened. Unser was now the new driver for the team, and Davey was kicked to the curb. After a decent year, Davey was at a Gallus Racing. This was a bad development, because it came so late into the offseason. Despite being a two-time championship runner-up, and being off the back of a fourth-place championship result the year prior, trying to find a new team was hard for Davey. However, Davey Hamilton would find drives. I say drives because because Davey would hop from car to car this year. A little over a week before the first race of the season, Davey got a deal signed to drive for Sinden Racing Services for race one of the season at Walt Disney World. The entry would be helped massively by Gallus Racing, who helped Davey get sponsorship from his previous year's sponsor, and even got Jamie Gallus, his race engineer from the previous year, to be Davey's race engineer for this race. So how did the season opener go for Davey? Not well. Davey's qualifying was actually pretty solid, as he'd start this race in 17th. It may not be the best on paper, but taking everything into consideration, it was a good showing. The race, however, was anything but, as only 22 laps in, he'd be taken out of the race after this crash in turn 1. It wasn't a hard hit, but it was enough to end his race earlier than expected. After the one-race deal with Sinden, Davey regained some solid footing. From round two on, Davey would now drive the number 16 Team Extreme car. His sponsor for his first race with the team was Lycos, an early internet search engine which would go on to have a bit of baggage in the racing community. They paid in free advertising on their website, which they called Lycos Box. That sponsorship money would go on to be panned by many, with Lycos even making its appearance on fellow YouTuber Slapshoes series Liars, Thieves, and Lawyers. Considering how this deal was done around the hive of the dot-com bubble, it makes sense why the deal went through. Davey once again had a mighty qualifying result, putting it on the grid in P10, extensively out-qualifying teammate Ertendare, who would start 24th. But sadly, Davey's race went poorly, as a DNF down to handling issues would knock him out of the race. Things got worse in Las Vegas, as this might have been the worst race from the year. It all started in practice, with electrical issues cutting back on his time on track. Then, after more issues in qualifying, he needed to go to a backup car, relegating him to a last-place start. Then, during the formation laps, Davey would stop on track with more electrical issues. And finally, on lap 97, Davey would make contact with the outside wall coming out of turn 4, breaking his suspension and netting Davey his third DNF in as many races. Next up was the Indy 500, and while Davey would actually finish this race, it still wasn't a great showing. Davey would qualify on the inside of row 10, starting in 28th place. Then in the race, Davey would finish 12 laps down in 20th. He now had a result on the board, but it wasn't a very good one. Texas two weeks later was a return to the DNFs, as after starting 22nd and engine failure 84 laps in, left Davey out of the race in 24th. So we're now passing the halfway mark of the 2000 IRL season, and so far Davey has 4 DNFs and 1 finish many laps down in 20th. Thankfully for Davey, things would improve after this, however it still wasn't a bed of roses. 
Pikes Peak soared a three-race streak of finishes for Davey, a streak which also netted his best results of the season. Pikes Peak itself was a best result for Davey this year, as after qualifying a fantastic eighth, Davey would take the checkered flag in 14th, five laps down. It may not be the best race in the world, but it was a meaningful result. The next race of the season in Atlanta stuck out a bit compared to the rest of the races from this stint. Davey would start in 17th, which was his only start outside the top 10 for the final four races of the year. He'd eventually finish 15th, which was a good result this season. However, it should be known that eight drivers who started ahead of him were taken out of the race due to crashes or mechanical issues. A little over a month later, when the IRL rocked up to Kentucky Speedway for the first ever race at the track, Davey would fall back again. From a ninth place start, Davey would go on to finish 16th, the last of the drivers to take the checkered flag. But after slowly dropping off in the last three races, Davey's team situation got rumbled yet again. For the final race of the season, Jacques Lazier and Davey Hamilton swapped rides. Davey was now at Mid-Atlantic Motorsports for a one-off entry at the Texas season finale, with Jack now driving for Team Extreme. With this came new sponsors in the form of Western Star Trucks, a new number, number 43, and hopefully for Davey, some new luck. Things were looking promising at first, as Davey would qualify in 7th, his best starting position of the season. Unfortunately, this great starting spot won't convert into a good result, as a wheel-bearing issue in lap 136 would leave Davey out of the race in 19th. Davey ended the 2000 season 23rd in championship points, a far cry from the 4th place a year prior, and 2nd in the 2 seasons before that. Davey was the last of all full-time drivers, and was actually beaten by a few part-timers. It was truly a disastrous season. However, you can't really pin all of this on Davey. He was in some pretty bad equipment, unreliable and slow, but the reason why I can't chalk it all up to the equipment is that Davey's teammate at Team Extreme, Ayrton Dare, finished 2nd at Pikes Peak and won the Rookie of the Year award. As much as Dare had a rocky season himself, finishing 16th in the standings, those two accomplishments prove that wasn't all down to the equipment. You can't really blame Davey if he wasn't in the right frame of mind, however. The instability throughout this season had to have done his mind in at times. This would be Davey's final full-time season in the Indy Racing League, an unfit send-off for a driver that I feel deserves a lot more respect than he currently gets. But despite my immense respect for the man and everything he's done in the sport, there's not a lot of redeeming qualities from this year. With zero top 10s, two top 15s, an average start of 16.2, an average finish of 19. 1, 5 DNFs, 0 lead lap finishes, and a best finish of 14th, this year was such an extreme departure from everything else Davey had done in IndyCar up to this point, that you have to wonder if Davey Hamilton's career was the biggest thing affected by Y2K. Thank you all for watching, and have a great afternoon.